YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to Bananas Epic Gaming. And today in Bananas Epic Gaming, we are doing another episode of Cage Talk. This is going to be the 70th episode of Cage Talk, and we're going to be doing the WrestleMania slash NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver Predictions. I'm currently filming this on the 21st of March, because I will be on set all of next week, and most of this week, so I won't have time to do it, and I do this every year. So please be sure to like and subscribe, tap the little bell on that YouTube app so you never miss an upload. And if they add another match, I will try to cover the matches I think they were add, which is only one for WrestleMania. And I will just give my predictions down in the description. So let's start off with NXT TakeOver, Stand and Deliver. The first match is going to be a Fatal 5 way for the NXT North American Championship. As Wesley picks his own opponents, and I think Wesley is going to pick J.D. McDonough, Ilya Dragunov, Nathan Frazier, and Axiom. And you can go any way. Wesley can lose his belt and probably do nothing, be lost, or he can retain. Because normally you do a Fatal 4 way, Fatal 5 way. To get the belt off the champion without the champion being pinned. So not knowing who his opponents are as of right now. I'm going to say Wesley wins. Because I think he will eventually drop that belt to Dragon Lee. At the next uh, NXT POE. Now on to the next match. Okay, so coming up next would be a fatal four-way ladder match. To crown the new NXT Women's champion as Gigi Dolan and Zoe Starks have already qualified and tonight on NXT I see Tiffany Stratton and Valkyrie qualifying for that for the ladder match as well and obviously I'm going to go with Tiffany Stratton here only because Roxanne Perez just got cleared and they're obviously going to be doing the John Cena, CM Punk, uh, double champions angle, slash Razor Ramon, HPK angle. And Roxanne Perez will eventually get a rematch and then get back the title that she never lost and be the undisputed women's champion of NXT. Then eventually face Gora Jade down the line. Now on to the next match. Coming up next would be the Women's Tag Team Championships as Alba Fire and Isla Dawn face the NXT Tag Team Champions for the Women's Division, Kiana James and Fallon Enley. And I'm obviously going to go with Alba and Isla. I'm not a fan of Fallon and Kiana James. I believe they should not have beaten Team Ninja when they did. Now on to the next match. The next match for the NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver card is a little over the year in the making. It is Johnny Gargano against Grayson Waller. Johnny Gargano got sent packing from Grayson Waller after 2.0 beat the NXT Black and Gold in War Games. And eventually Johnny Gargano got sent to the main roster. So it makes perfect sense that Gargano would go tie up the loose end in NXT and be some respect to Grayson Waller. And obviously I'm going with Gargano here. I'm never not going to go with Gargano. Sorry, Grayson. And the main event of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver is Braun Breaker defending his NXT Heavyweight Championship against... Arguably the last person he hasn't really beaten in NXT from 2.0, and that is Carmelo Hayes. The way I see it, winner is obviously going to be the NXT champion. Loser will go up to the main roster either via draft or the night after Mania. And he, this match here has to be Carmelo Hayes' crowning moment. Send Braun Breaker up to the main roster. He's just about ready. Send him to Friday Night SmackDown because SmackDown needs more bodies on that roster. Let Carmelo Hayes have his moment and lose the title either next year at WrestleMania Philly 
or in November or December. Now let's get into the WrestleMania card. Starting off the WrestleMania card, we're going to go with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn going after the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championships as they take on Jimmy and Jay the Usos. Now this is being complete honest. These guys should main event WrestleMania. I'm sorry to the women, but with the year that Sammy and the Usos have had, they should main event night one. Let the Usos lose and let that be the first domino to fall for the bloodline. And then you can say Roman is pissed. Usos messed up. And then if you take the belt out, belt off of Roman on Sunday night, you can say it was all because of the Usos, and the Usos could eventually leave Roman. But I'm going to go with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, with Sami Zayn pinning Jey Uso after a Huluva kick. Now on to the next match. The next match would be Bianca Belair defending her Raw Women's Championship against Asuka. It's time for Asuka to get her flowers. Asuka has not won a WrestleMania since she's been on the main roster. She's not won a WrestleMania weekend. And obviously has not won a WrestleMania. So, sorry Bianca. You've had a lengthy title reign. But it's time for Asuka. So, my pick is Asuka here. Coming up next would be the Hell in a Cell, would be Edge versus Finn Balor. Now, we have been teased that we're getting Demon Finn against Brood Edge inside the Hell in a Cell, and seeing this would be Edge's last WrestleMania because he's set to retire later this year. I see Edge uh, putting Finn over, personally. This is going to be one of the longer matches on the night because this also has had a long story build to it. So, And Finn will hopefully be in the title picture after this big win over Edge. So I'm going with Finn here. And now the Brock Lesnar match. Brock Lesnar versus Omas. Seeing how Brock also said that he's nearing the end. I want to say Omas, but I don't think Brock's going to lose here. Because Brock's going to pick up Omas for the F5. The place is going to go nuts, and then Brock will win. So Brock Lesnar is my pick here. Now on to the next match. The next match would be the Men's Tag Team Showcase as Strowman and Ricochet go up against the Prophets, a.k.a. the Street Prophets, Alpha Academy, and the Viking Raiders. I would think and hope that the winners of this match would get the number one contenders for whoever wins KO Zayn versus the Usos at Backlash. That's what the winners should get, and I'm going to go with the Street Prophets here. Maybe they turn heel. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Now on to the next match. Now the Intercontinental title will be put on the line in a triple threat match as Gunther defends against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Now, if this was one-on-one, -on -one, I would say Gunther is going to win. But the fact that it is a triple threat match and we know that Triple H is extremely high in Gunther... I see Sheamus uh, getting the last title that he needs because he's never held the IC Championship. And I see McIntyre uh, eating the pin. Drew's only in this match to eat the pin, in my opinion. Now on to the next match. Coming up next would be Becky Lynch, Lita, and Trish Stratus going up against Damage Control. 
Bailey, Eos Guy, and Dakota Guy. Now, with what's been coming out about Trish wanting to be a heel, I'm going to say damage, damage control wins. Who gets the pin? I don't know. I would be okay with Dakota Kai getting the pin because she's extremely underrated. Against Becky Lynch because I'm pretty sure that they want to do Becky versus Trish at SummerSlam in Detroit. I think that's going to be like the long-term goal from here on out. So damage control over the Hall of Famers and the man. Now on to the next match. The next match would be Seth Rollins against Logan Paul. That we know this happening on night one because they've said it multiple times. Now Seth Rollins is due for a win. But I see them putting over Logan Paul. I see Seth Rollins getting rewarded for putting over Paul maybe by winning the Money in the Bank or during the draft going to SmackDown and winning whatever title they're putting on SmackDown because eventually they will split up the heavyweight titles. So I'm going to go with Logan Paul here only because I'm going to play the celebrity card and because it's in LA and it's on his birthday too. So sorry Seth but Logan's my pick here. Now the next match would be the Women's Tag Team Showcase and I would assume that the winners of this would get a future Women's Tag Team title match, maybe a Backlash. We know one team that's going to be Liv Morgan and Raquel Gonzalez. I think they're going to put Ronda and Shayna here. Then I would assume they would put Chelsea Green and Carmella here, then Mia Yim and Candice LeRae. I think that's to be the four teams. Because you have good workers in that group. And Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler are going to go over. Because they were supposed to win the tag titles at WrestleMania. Which is what, what Ronda wanted and asked for. And whatever she asks for, you might want to give her. Because she's one of your bigger names in that women's division. Who eats the submission? I would say... Carmella, because if you make Liv Morgan eat that submission, that's going to infuriate everybody. And you're not going to do that to Candace and, and Mia Yim. They shouldn't do that to Candace and Mia Yim. But it would fit Carmella and Chelsea Green more. So I'm going with the woman of MMA, Ronda Rousey, and Sienna Blake Easler. Now the next match I want to talk about before I get into the two rumored matches that are being thrown out there is the United States Championship and that's Austin Theory defending his United States title against John Cena this has been listed as a quote dream match because Austin Theory is literally this generation's version of John Cena I mean just to look at them the similarities are there and seeing how it's for the title, and John Cena is probably going to need to go on set of Peacemaker Season 2 soon, Austin Theory is going to win. And John Cena is not going to give up. I don't see John Cena ever submitting. Obviously. That's his whole thing. But Austin Theory wins here, then he cuts a promo on Raw. And we either get a debut or a return, a.k.a. maybe Matt Cardona. So I'm going with Austin Theory here. Now, Bobby Lashley was originally scheduled to face Bray Wyatt, but Bray Wyatt's having some personal problems. So they put those plans on hold, or I'm pretty sure they're just going to scrap them. There was talks that he might do an open challenge, and that's when people were throwing the names of Jay White out there. Or L.A. Knight. If he does do an open challenge and Jay White does come, that's going to... The roof is going to be blown off of uh, the L.A. Rams' home. 
So if that does happen, I'm going to go uh, Jay White. But if not, I can see him maybe doing a segment and we get the Hurt Business back together. Either at WrestleMania or the Raw after Mania. Now on to the next match. Now the last match that hasn't been fully announced yet before we get into the main event, and that is the Dominic Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio. Because they're either doing this next weekend at WrestleMania or they're doing it at SummerSlam. I can see them doing the one-on-one at Summer, SummerSlam and maybe doing a tag team with Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio against Dominic and Priest. Rey goes and gets help from Legado de Fantasma, and that's how you can get Santos on the card. Or they're going to do the one-on-one and, and Rey's just going to retire early because Rey Mysterio said he wants to retire when Edge does. If that does happen, Dominic Mysterio will go over in both scenarios. So my pick is Dominic Mysterio if this match eventually does happen because he said that he's going to go ask his mom, a.k.a. Angie Mysterio, to make Ray be, quote, man enough again to accept his challenge. So Dom's going to get what he wants eventually, and then he'll win. Now let's talk about the main event. I'm sorry, but we actually have two more matches. I completely forgot about the SmackDown Women's Championship, which is another match that could main event night one, and that is Charlotte Flair defending her SmackDown Women's title against the 2023 Royal Rumble winner, Rhea Ripley. Now... This is semi-long-term storytelling because you could say that when Rhea lost to Charlotte during WrestleMania 2020, that started the uh, downfall of her career before she came back and joined Judgment Day. But Charlotte Flair needs to put Rhea Ripley over here. Rhea becomes a SmackDown superstar officially. Judgment Day joins her over on SmackDown, and Charlotte goes over to Monday Night Raw to eventually wrestle Bianca so Bianca could slay the last horsewoman that she needs to face. So my pick here is obviously going to be Rhea Ripley. Now we've come to the main event of Night 2, and Roman Reigns puts his undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship on the line against the 2023 Royal Rumble winner, Cody Rhodes. Now, there's rumors going around that WWE doesn't know what to do. Have Cody win or have Roman win? Roman wins, he's going to break that record over a thousand days and he will eventually knock Hulk Hogan out of the Out of the top five. Cody wins. You make a big moment. That has been in the making for the last two years. Because Cody Rhodes' pops are getting louder and louder and louder. The noise is very noticeable. So for the first time in nearly, what, three and a half years... Roman is going to (laughs) lose. He's going to take a pinfall. Because the last time Roman took a pinfall was December 2019. And Dusty's kid from NXT is going to lose to Dusty's actual kid. So I'm going to go with Cody Rhodes here to win the WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship. Then drop the Universal title. And if they retire that title and bring in a new title, which is what I've been hearing that they might want to do for SmackDown, okay? But they should get rid of that version of the Universal Championship because that version should be known as the Roman version. So Cody Rhodes would be my pick for the main event for Night 2 to win the WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship. 
I wanted to thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Tap the little bell on my YouTube app so you guys never miss an upload. And the next couple Cades talks will be my seventh round NFL mock draft for the Arizona Cardinals. All seven rounds. My Scream 6 review is coming. Maybe the day it gets put on VOD. Or a little bit after that. And then I'm not sure what would be after that. Because I know I'm going to re-rank the Arrowverse later on. After I get caught up on the Flash. So that's what the uh, case talks are looking like for the rest of the year. Scream 6 review. The 7 round NFL mock draft. The Arrowverse uh, re-ranking down the line and I'm going to do for Halloween I'm going to do a Scream 6 ranking okay so please be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one